Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. It's a very rainy day in South Florida today, but that's okay. I'm still here to spread some knowledge with all of you around Citrix and specifically in today's video, we'll be talking through Citrix's application delivery controller, aka Netscaler. So in this video, my goal is to educate all of you with choosing the right option that best fits your specific use case. This can be a very, very confusing process and ADC can do a multitude of different things as far as front-ending existing web servers, load balancing different servers, load balancing a Citrix virtual app and desktop environment, providing remote access, web application firewall, SSL acceleration, image caching, you name it. And there's a lot of different platforms and additions available through the Netscaler portfolio. So if you like today's video, definitely give me a thumbs up um, and subscribe to my channel. That really helps me out. And let's get into it. So first thing first, let's talk through the different platforms that are available for a Netscaler. So we have virtual VPX, physical MPX, a combination SDX as well as BLX and CPX. So we'll spend most of the time on VPX and MPX because this fits most use cases. So with a VPX, that's a virtual appliance. So this is an appliance that's a Linux base. It can be imported into all major hypervisors. You can figure a Netscaler IP to that and you access that over a web URL to get access to the management console. So I'll talk through the throughput um, capabilities of that in the next upcoming slide, but this is, uh, this is an appliance that'll fit the majority of use cases out there. You also have MPX. This is a physical base appliance. The main difference between a VPX and an MPX is the scalability. So the MPX is built for SSL acceleration. It has something called a Cavium chip built into it. So if you're using the Netscaler, the ADC to front end a web server in which you're gonna have a lot of traffic to it, you'll be able to support more users with the MPX than you would with the VPX because of that SSL acceleration. So you have higher capacity and higher performance. We also have an SDX, which is a combination of the two. So it's a physical base appliance in which you can have multiple virtual instances of a VPX. So this is primarily used for consolidation. Let's say you have multiple departments within your organization, I don't know, HR, marketing, and you, they each need an instance of an ADC. You can, you can um, make that possible with the SDX um, appliance. There's also a BLX, this is a bare metal license. So this is to convert an entire piece of hardware into an ADC. And then we have a container-based ADC, which is a CPX. I haven't dealt a lot with it, but if you are doing any sort of um, you know, development work, app dev, and you're leveraging containers, um, I have heard use cases in which the ADC really helped accelerate that, that, that scenario. So some things to consider when we talk about sizing. So we need to look at three main factors. Of course, the number of users. Each user is probably gonna leverage some sort of um, bandwidth amount. We need to look at the features that are being leveraged on the ADC. If we're leveraging features like web app firewall, that's gonna have um, a level of utilization on top of, of what's available in your appliance. And then the servers that are being load balanced. If you're load balancing exchange servers, as an example, you know there's there's a tax to that. There, there's um, a throughput requirement for load balancing large servers like an exchange server. So my rule of thumb is, you know, check the ADC data sheet. I'll include that in the notes below so you have access to that. And you'll notice as you go through that, the number following the platform corresponds to the throughput. So in the VPX world, as an example, if we look at a VPX 1000, that's one gigabyte of, of throughput. If we look at a VPX 10, on the other hand, that's 10 megabytes of, of throughput. An MPX 5910, again, 10 gigabytes. SDX 26200, 200 gigabytes of throughput. So really look at the, the last um, numbers or so to identify exactly what the throughput capability is for that type of license. The nice thing about Citrix is if you ever get close to reaching that threshold, it's very easy to upgrade the license so you get additional throughput, especially when we talk about the, the virtual appliance. Let's say you get a VPX 200 and you're getting capped out on your throughput, just upgrade that to a VPX 1000, you know, re-import the license and now you have additional throughput capability for that VPX 1000. So there's also different 
um, additions that are available. So the first one I want to highlight, this one's a, you know, just a very specific use case, and that's a Citrix Enterprise Gateway. So this doesn't provide many ne much networking capability outside of providing users a remote gateway to gain access to internal resources. In other words, let's say you're an organization and you have an intranet website, which is only accessible when you're on the company network, rather than VPNing in from home to gain access to that intranet website, you can front end that intranet website with the Citrix Enterprise Gateway VPX to give users the ability to log in and gain access to that intranet website. So it removes the need of a VPN. Similarly, if you're leveraging Citrix virtual apps and desktops, and you don't care about load balancing and redundancy and you just need remote access, the Enterprise Gateway is gonna be a more cost-effective option for your environment. We also have Standard. So Standard still provides an Enterprise Gateway capability, same with Advanced and Premium, but it also provides load balancing capability. So if you are looking to build any sort of redundancy from server to server, from VM to VM, you'd want to upgrade to standard, especially as it relates to your virtual app and desktop environment. Um, in fact, basic N factor authentication is supported. So things like Radius and SAML. But if you're looking for more advanced N factor authentication using you know, higher end protocols, conditional based access, that's when we need to move to advanced for AAA traffic management. So you can actually create a AAA V server, create custom policies within you know, your identity and access management. Um, I think I actually have a video where I configured n factor authentication on this, uh, but I think it's on another YouTube channel. But if, if anyone is interested and they want to see how that's configured, um, let me know and I'll, I'll respond back with a link to that video. Also includes a thousand universal licenses. Standard includes 500. Um, these are used for traditional VPN capability. So if you're not using the, the gateway, just a proxy connection, if you're using it for full-blown VPN, um, that consumes a universal license. So you get 500 included in standard and 1,000 in advance. And I believe with the enterprise gateway, don't quote me on this, but I believe you have to buy the universal licenses separately. Premium has no universal license requirement, comes with unlimited. And with premium as well, you get web app firewall. So the ability to add a firewall to your web applications. You also get HDX Insight historical data. So this is the ability to go back and see what's happening in the environment. Whereas with advanced, it's all real time data. So with premium, you can go back and see historical data with HDX Insight. Um, so this is just a few features. Definitely take a look at the feature matrix so you can see the list of all the features. These just tend to be the more pertinent ones that, that I personally see that my customers are more interested in. So some other considerations, you know, I end all these videos with other considerations. Uh, maintenance and services or subscription length. So a Citrix ADC is available as both a perpetual license as well as a subscription license. So either you subscribe to you know, MNS, one, two, three, five year options, or you can just purchase it as a subscription and you're paying annually for that subscription. Um, high availability requirements, you know, do you or your customer need two quoted for redundancy? If you're using an ADC for load balancing capability, but you only have a single ADC, well, that's a single point of failure. I also like it to mention from a security perspective, especially when we talk about um, leveraging the ADC for remote access, is do you need a pair of ADCs both in your DMZ as well as a pair in your own data center? So in other words, if you're having users access the environment remotely, they're going through the DMZ to gain access to those internal resources. And if you're using the same pair of Netscalers in your DMZ to load balance your internal servers, well, now you're going into your DMZ and then back into your internal network for the load balancing capability. And you have to ask yourself, is that, is that sufficient for your environment? Or do you need a set of Netscalers just for that internal load balancing so you don't jump into your DMZ and back into your internal network? Um, pulled capacity and Citrix ADM. So definitely check out pool capacity if that's a use case for you. In other words, what it does is you're paying for a pool of throughput in which you can divide that throughput across multiple ADC instances. I forget what the minimum is for this. I think it might be like 
I, I don't even remember. Uh, but definitely take a look at that if you want that flexibility to be able to say like, hey, I'm paying for 20 gigs of pooled capacity and I can say, hey, this ADC gets one gig, this one gets five gigs, this one gets 200 megs. So you can literally decide which appliance gets which amount of throughput. And with that, you also get Citrix ADM capability. So if you don't want to know what ADM is, it's Citrix's application delivery management, which is a management tool to, to manage multiple instances of Citrix ADC. This is primarily going to be used for larger deployments in which you have ADCs spread across multiple data centers, and it makes it easier to have a, a one-stop view to see all of the appliances that are in your environment, as well as manage things like certificate management um, to make that easier. And then lastly, there is a Citrix Gateway service. So this is a Citrix Gateway that's cloud hosted by Citrix. So note that if you are looking for a cloud hosted model of the gateway, um, there is that available option as well. So that, that's really it. If anyone has any questions, as always, feel free to write in the comments of today's YouTube video. Again, if you like today's video, definitely give me a like. I really would appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel and I'll be hopefully creating some, some more helpful videos for you all in the future. Thanks all.